Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the load more component. Let's walk through the pagination option inside the load more component. First, let's see this working live. Let's see what this pagination element looks like and let's see it working. Here, we're showing five items on the page. We have this generated pagination element here waiting for us to interact with. And when I go click on number two, three, four, five, all the way to 100, back to one, this list is updating in real time. And this UI is going to update based on how many elements you are showing on the page, how many collection items you're showing on the page. So here we're showing five items. There's 100 pages, so we're showing 500 CMS items on the page behind this pagination. If you are wondering if you can filter behind this, yes, you absolutely can filter behind it. We have made it. So pagination now works with filter. There's a separate video on this. This is only covering the new pagination option. And this is all updating in real time. As you see clicking through this, this works really fast and I can go and really navigate through this list quite quickly. We're also able to customize the styles here. Let's get into designer, let's see how this works. Please know that if you are jumping into the library for the first time, this is your first video for Load More, I do recommend you check out the videos, example one and three. And the reason is, in this video, I'm not going over the basics of this Load More component, I'm only going over the new option to paginate. So the basics are covered in one, load all is covered in three, and this would be the next step to add pagination to that logic. Excellent, let's go and see what we have in Designer. Here in Designer, we're showing a whole bunch of items on the page, 100, the full amount that is allowed inside a single collection list. We are setting our items to paginate, and we have 100 items per, per page, so 500 items total over five pages. Great, we do need to make sure we have the class on this load more button, it is required, and that is load more button. We'll have that in JavaScript when we get into custom code. And the big thing that we need to be mindful of here for pagination is this blank div with a unique class. Here we have pagination container. And in the custom code, we're going to say pagination container is where we should insert the pagination element. That pagination element is this right here. We are not building this out in designer. It is happening automatically for us. We're just gonna set some CSS styles. So this pagination container can be anywhere on the page. It could be below the list. It could be above the list. It could be fixed in the corner. It could be to the left, to the right, anywhere. Doesn't matter. As long as it's here, it's a unique class. We are going to insert that pagination in this div. You can also see that I'm using a flex, align center, justify center. And what that's doing is going to center this here on the page. Excellent. Let's get into the custom code. Let's see what this looks like. Let's get down to the pagination example. We are going into the load more folder and here we have example five pagination. We'll go inside page settings and we will scroll on down before the closing body tag. Great. Okay. Like I said before, this is not going over the basics of load more. It's not going over the basics of the library. We're not covering the instance. We're not covering the button. We're not covering reset IX. Let's first jump into load all, which must be set to true. It is required to be set to true in order for this pagination to work. Great. Now let's go to pagination. You can see that pagination is an option. It is surrounded by this comma in between these other options. And please be aware of the structure here, the open curly, the closed curly, and surrounded with these commas. Great, let's get inside pagination and go enable true. Of course, we want to enable pagination. That's what we're doing here. So we set that to true. Items per page set to five. 
as you can see in this live example, we are showing five items. We can set items per page to any value. We can set it to one, we can set it to 10, we can set it to 100, it doesn't matter. Whatever you set it to, it will show that many items on each page of pagination. And based on the amount of items per page and the amount of items that you're loading onto the page, this is going to update automatically. So right now we have five items over 500 items, that's 100 total pages. If I were to change this to 10, we would then see 10 items per page and then there would only be 50 pages to go and paginate through. That pagination element is going to update automatically based on what you put in here. Then the very important part of insert pagination, you guessed it, this is how we insert the pagination element. And we saw before right under that list, we had the pagination container class. That is what is going to be the base of that pagination element. Remember, this can be anywhere on the page. It can be below, above, right, left, fixed, doesn't matter. As long as that class is here, we're putting the element inside of it. And then we have some CSS that we're going to add inside the JavaScript here. Please know that these are the basic, most straightforward styles that you can apply. We also created a very easy class system, so you can go and apply custom CSS, you can go make this element your own, and as you start working with it, we're going to come up with an update here, and we are not going to always go with this method. We wanna see how you use it, how you customize it, and then release an update that will make this more efficient. For now, this works, it's super easy, let's go through it. We have a background color. And that background color will be the background color of each of these boxes. The previous, the next, 100, the dots, the numbers, that is the background color and that's set to white here. Background color active, you guessed it. When it's active, it's going to turn this color. And that's where we see this nice purple, cool. Text color, that is the initial text color that is showing throughout the element. So the next text, the 100 text, 38 text, that is our text color. Text color active, when that background color active is there, when one of those boxes is active, what is that text color? That's text color active and you can see here, we're swapping it with white, perfect. Then we have the border color, and the border color is what you see going around this whole element as well as these lines going through it. So you set that color, it's going to update to all of these borders, and then you are good to go. With these styles, you can go and create what you are seeing on that live example. In this example, I'm showing animation false. You can set it true, but not needed here. And remember, if you can do a little bit of work with CSS, go ahead and try this out. There's going to be a separate video showing you how you can do this. So if you're not comfortable with these styles, if you're not comfortable opening up Inspector, we'll have a separate video showing how to do that. For now, we are leaving these classes right here for you, ready to go and manipulate. Thank you for checking out this how-to. If you have any questions about how this works, please check out our JavaScript service, sweetjs.io. We are here for you, we're ready to help, and we are ready to see what you do with this pagination. That's effing sweet.